Hello and welcome to Somewhere in Waldo County. I'm Ned Leitner and I'm with a longtime friend and artist, Bo Atkinson, who lives uh, in Montville. Uh, I first met Bo in the, I would say, early 1970s when I think his primary medium was wood and I was actually uh, a carpenter's helper for Bo. But I knew he was an artist when I visited his home, which is still right where you are today, yeah, Bo. Yeah. And he had designed a floor with amazing curves. And he said, I was influenced by boat building. And I knew I was with an artist. Over the years, I've seen Bo's interests expand. There, I came here uh, probably 20 years ago, and he had become enamored with ferro cement and its sculptural opportunities. But recently, I received, because we're Facebook friends, uh, uh, the fact that he has a roadside art gallery, and it looked completely show, different. Show, not a gallery, show. Show, okay, <laughs> uh, uh, a roadside show. Um, and it looked so different from the other work he was doing, and I said, well, it's just like Picasso. He went through his Cubist period, his blue period, and now Bo is in a period where he is dealing with, I think, computer-generated art, is it? Yeah, this is computer, uh, 3D models, um, mm -hmm. computer graphics, all that, yeah. So, um, Bo, how did you happen to become enamored with the 3D and computer graphics. Um, when I think of you, I think of you as one of my first, you know, people who was living off the land, so to speak, living in the country off the grid. And yet, when I think of computer and internet, I think of it as being very world connected. And I think we are all made of different parts of us. Uh, has the internet played an important part oh, in your absolutely. life? Absolutely, but going long before that, I was very interested in geometry my whole life. And seeing the early uh, computer generated geometry was very thrilling. That was before the PC came along in the late 90s for the, with the capability of doing 3D uh, modeling. Before that, the average person could not model because there just wasn't the software available. But that started coming in full swing around the mid 1990s and a little bit earlier, but not much. So uh, I've been with it ever since, and that was my greater motivation for being with computers, was the 3D, this kind of polyhedral geometry and other kinds of geometry. Mm -hmm. Well, it's very mathematical, of course. Absolutely. And did you, when you approached the creation, did you approach it from a mathematical perspective? or uh, did this you? Is, this is the emphasis I'm, I take, is that I take entirely as a form, not as a mathematical notation. Although, I mean, I appreciate mathematical notation, of course, but I think uh, humanity is more verbose and less, uh, well, some, some of us are very, are very uh, form inclined, you know, we're interested in form and structure and things like that, but uh, for the most part, it's, it's a verbal culture that we have. Even computers are designed to work with words and sentences, and uh, I think it's very uh, limiting and I doubt that the new supercomputers are going to continue that. I think they'll go more into symbology and even directly into form. Because to calculate with form, it'd be you could do far much more than you could just by having to speak of every little measurement and every little starting point and end point in a sentence. And that, that's, uh, to me, I think that's, that is what uh, impedes the personal computer, at least. I don't know very much about a newer supercomputer, but I, I've read little bits about it. Mm -hmm. Well, from what I understand, the computer right on my cell phone is would be have been considered a supercomputer a few years ago. Oh, no, no, a supercomputer is actually referring to major breakthroughs in computer computation mm -hmm. as a possibility. Uh, we're very limited with these little devices to, uh, you know, the things that you use them for, they're excellent, but uh, they're not going to teach us the next big... Uh, thing to learn in, in life, in science, or anything like that. I mean, they're very useful tools. They're, they're more like notebooks are useful, and uh, calculators are very useful. Phones, absolutely, communication. That's the other thing, the distinction I would make, is that I think computers were misnamed. They should have been called communicators, because that's, in fact, what they're used for, <laughs> and in the most part, uh, not, not so much for computing. The average person does not 
use it like a calculator or uh, might do their taxes that way, but uh, not, 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 uh, not very much beyond, not, not very creatively, I mm -hmm. would say. Yeah. Well, I think oftentimes we get our names in the early parts of our you know, evolution, and then as what is able to be done becomes more, like, for instance... It's what it's used for, not what it <laughs> does. <laughs> right, right. Well, I, I, I know that um, for years, actually, I still sometimes say, would you go to the icebox and get something out? Well, it's been a long time since the refrigerator, which, by the way, can now spit out uh, uh, cold water as well as crushed ice cubes, uh, has been an icebox. But, you know, we still use them sort of as shorthand. Um, I wanted to, we, we had a chance to talk a little earlier before we got started, and you are a strong believer in not mm, throwing stuff away, and you, you know, went on to talk about how you've had multiple generations of computers that you've, that you still yeah, have yeah. because oh, yeah. you don't like the idea of little kids in some South a South country. In Ghana, for instance, Ghana, yeah. Africa is, is a great example. Also, uh, there's a city in s south of the China Manufacturing Center for Computers, a little fishing village. These things are available on YouTube. You can see, uh, if you go up to e-waste, yeah. right in e-waste, and go to YouTube, you'll find these videos showing what happens to these computers that you own and throw away. And you assume you're taking them into a, a benevolent store that's going to make sure that all the parts are properly handled. But they're not. They're really just taken to a poor country. The plastic is burned off, and it's not even properly burned. It's producing all kinds of toxins and smoke, and the, the inhabitants there have to deal live with it. And there's yeah. no choice. So what I guess I was getting at is that you have been into computers for a long yes, time. I and have many. The, I even have Duncan's first computer that Duncan had. It was an Atari. It was a little toy. And Duncan is a mutual <laughs> friend of ours who went to Worcester Polytechnic Institute and was an early adopter of computers. Yes, so, uh, Bo, you've been interested in design, using computers to design your art, art for at least, what, 20 years? Oh, yes, absolutely. 1991, I bought my first computer, mm -hmm. a PC. And you used it for artistic expression as yes. opposed to... Yes. But you also research a lot of things. I know oh, that yeah, you... but they didn't have the Internet until... We had the Internet connection here, I think, in the late 1990s. Okay. But not before. Before that, we did have the, the boards. Uh, you know, you call up a... It doesn't matter. You know, it, yeah. it, it wasn't the Internet, though. <laughs> right. Well, um, I know what I really care about is the finished product and the mechanisms that you use to create the finished product is really secondary. But I was curious, like, do you had has the the computer programs that you've used over the years changed and to create these these works? Oh, very and, much. And very and much. and tell me a little bit about like what you started with and what you are using now to create your imagery. Yeah, okay, back in the 1990s, the first uh, 3D program I had was called uh, Silver Screen, and it was, uh, I thought, a very powerful, but it was more towards the machinist, the parts the machinist would want to cut out or something. Uh, it was very primitive compared to what we have today. And But uh, the first good 3D that came along was on Mac platform, so I immediately moved over to the Mac platform in 1995 or so. But before that, it was Windows 3.1. And, uh, of course, uh, people who know that <laughs> know what that was like uh, can well understand that uh, yeah, I might have gone elsewhere. But today, Windows is right up to par with the, In fact, any good software program is going to run both Windows and Mac if it's a big seller because there's a big Mac market, too, for things to do with art, at least. Um, so uh, I, to me, that's all secondary. Uh, the, what the software maker, developer does, that's what counts the most. And I happen to like the software I'm using. It's called Form Z, and that's also on the Internet and can be found. I think it has everything in the package. It's affordable, and uh, you can go a long way with it. It's, uh, it's very has among the highest sorts of things you can find anywhere in a university with geometry that you can do it with this. But uh, also there is a tendency to drop away from the traditional geometry. I'm a, I'm a little sad by that, but uh, not not terribly. I mean, I didn't. I don't think that the polyhedra have to be uh, focalized alone. Although I do a lot of polyhedra stuff, like you'll see here. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, uh, it, it that beckons back to uh, Buckminster Fuller, who was another famous mainer out here in the 
in the bay. Uh, Deer Isle, was it? No, mm-hmm. not Deer Isle. I don't know which island was. <laughs> anyway, he's, his family had one of those little islands out there. And um, he, of course, gave us a geodesic dome and so many other things, a thing called uh, Synergy. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's another thing to be looked up. Fa- fabulous man, fabulous mm-hmm. teacher. But uh, And just to interject, when I first met you back in 1974, you were, uh, or well, it was a little after that, you started building a dome for your house. Right, and but it, not geodesic, however. No, but it was... I went a, the, old, uh, the old basilica style. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's right. a little easier to deal with. Just, just uh, curved triangles, none of this... Uh, yeah. You know, and I see uh, echoes of it still in many of the things that when you come. So, Bo, if people are interested in seeing your work, how do they find I I tell people you head down Route 3 and it's just past the intersection that takes you off to Liberty, right? Yeah, except there's two such uh, intersections on Route 3, you know, five miles apart on okay. either side of Liberty. So uh, this is the one closer to the water, but... Uh, closer to the ocean, uh, but uh, and at Junction 173 and 3. And you see a sign, at least this time of year, for Fernwood Gardens, that road there. It's possible, yeah, yeah. yeah, generally. But yeah. anyway, you go down, how, how far down Well, you, you can you? find us on Google Plus as well. Okay, if you're, uh, I'll put some information on the screen right. so people can find you and come out because it's just really an amazing experience because you are an artist who has had an art be an integral part of of your home and your home life. And you're married to Alda Stitch, who is uh, an incredible landscape architect. And you, uh, and you, the two of you have built an amazing home over the years. Well, thank you for that. Uh, that's, that's a generous <laughs> thing to say. <laughs> so getting back to your work, um, what I'm seeing here uh, in your, in your um, are these prints? And are they... They, you mentioned 3D, and there is a three-dimensional quality to them, though obviously as prints, they're two-dimensional. Talk a little bit about how they are 3D yet also 2D. Well, this is fascinating. What is 3D and what is 2D? Well, I figure you're 3D, <laughs> and the picture I took of you is 2D. Yeah. That's in my rather yeah. simplistic approach. Yeah, but uh, at the same time, by the same token, you can look at a video like this video, and you you you, you recognize okay, there's a lot of 3D here. Right. Uh, people, you, like you say, hands. And, right. You watch a movie, and right. it's it, even though it's, it's theoretic, technically it's 2D. It's actually uh, 2D, really. <laughs> yeah. And uh, no matter how close you get to that screen, you're not going to do better. But uh, unless you actually go into a 3D, but 3D, by the way, today with computers in the high end of computer math, it's been discussed uh, with rationality that uh, it's all a simulation, even the 3D is a simulation, uh, whereas we say the, the computer screen is kind of a simulation, it simulates something else. But, uh, and now it's being said in, in science, and high, there are people in, in high parts of science and math who are saying this, that uh, all, of, all of reality is actually a simulation, much like a movie is. Right. Uh, you, for instance, you play with, with uh, virtual reality that's a part of computer, computing with 3D but, and immersing in it. But, this is, uh, it's being said that this actual nature and everything else is also a simulation of a higher, much higher computer owner, let's call it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> much that internet. great computer in the sky. Exactly. Well, I <laughs> must say that I, you know, the more you um, mention it, it reminds me of like Nova episodes on PBS that I've watched where they basically, you know, everything was very comfortable when it was like, well, there's electrons and protons and this and that. And it turns out, that there's a whole lot of space and a whole lot of energy, but not a whole lot of actual matter that we as human beings perceive as matter. So it's a, it's it's quite, um, I don't know how we get, this is what happens when Bo and I start talking, we get off on tangents. You know, I wanted to bring it back to the tangible, which is um, when can c- people come and see your work and how do they do so? Do you like you, is, do you have particular hours you like to see people? Well, if they would like to speak with me personally, the best thing is to contact me ahead of time, either by email or telephone. Uh, the phone machine answers our phone. We have way too many uh, you know, unwanted spam calls. So we let the, uh, the person, the caller, you know, state what they want or what they're interested. If they want to come and see my art, I welcome that. Mm-hmm. Um, and can people just drive by here and stop oh, yeah. and get or out? Or that's the other option. Just get out and uh, park the car. By the, There's a road right behind the camera. There's the dirt road, and this is what you would see. And this is one of the things I'm calling my art show, and the other thing we'll look at later, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, 
Yes, indeed. Absolutely no obligation. Just drive by if you like. Sure. I didn't like the word drive by, Archo, because... It, it, it makes me think you're going to shoot yeah, the work. I don't want to get shoot. I, I have enough <laughs> problems already. Let's have a drive by. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, um, yeah, so uh, park by would yeah. be a better expression. Drive through, you know, <laughs> drive through. <laughs> drive through Montville, you know, drive through the country roadside, rural roadsides, beautiful countryside here. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to say that someone's going to come by and get out and look at the work, but they don't want to disturb your Saturday morning, you know, privacy, let's say. That's not uh, so much an issue if I'm busy. I'll just let the person know I'm busy, uh, you know, or anyway, I just won't be here. You know? <laughs> my point is this, is that, People, I know that when I looked at the artwork, some of the work spoke to me. I'm not sure if the reason it spoke to me is because it reminded me of a particular Star Wars episode that I liked or whether it created, you know, sometimes uh, artwork creates an emotional response. Um, and I imagine that what creates an emotional sp response for me may be different then what creates an emotional response for Bo or for you watching on TV? When you created your works, did you have a particular vision in mind for each thing? Or was it the result of doodling and you came upon something? Yeah, I would, I would say that. Uh, both, really, in that uh, sometimes uh, inspiration comes from the least expected places. You might just be walking along and, and see a form and it might uh, inspire, you know, some thoughts about forms or uh, it, all the above. Uh, there's so many things that uh, inspire um, just mm -hmm. living in a world with I find everything inspiring. I find I, I make it inspiring. It, it's all part of it. It takes an imagination. And uh, I, I highly recommend developing one's imagination. And I think uh, that's a much better activity than memorizing by rote, you know, your multiplication table or, you know, the stock market prices or whatever. Uh, that sort of thing is not, uh, for me, is not inspiring. I, I, I use imagination. I develop imagination. I realize that uh, you literally have to simulate the 3D in your mind mm -hmm. and see it working. You, you not only design a chair, but you design, okay, it has to be working too. You animate it. That's <laughs> computer graphics and man animation. But it's also... Uh, you can simulate this in your mind, and then you'll know it's going to work properly. Uh, yeah. At least you'll try things. You'll try experiments. Does it actually work the way I, I'd simulate it in my mind? Yes, no, maybe. So uh, this, for me, is how I approach things. Well, one of the things that I that Bo and I have in common is that we were bro both brought up in uh, overseas uh, uh, amongst Roman ruins. Yeah. Uh, I, I, and what that meant is that in our parents' yards and in the world around us, there were, oh, perhaps fragments of columns of, the, of some past, um, uh, some past building. Uh, maybe uh, in my life, there were many sculptures of beautiful sculptures that were missing their heads because yeah. I don't know somebody took the heads as a souvenir but I think that has influenced you a lot Bo in not necessarily the work here but in the your love and pursuit of some of your um, cement work and metal work and you also and and also your love of nature oh absolutely Ned we're children in the ruins of Rome. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, learned so much from that. Uh, I, I don't even know where to begin that story. But uh, Ned here certainly shares some of this feeling. And he's the only person in my life that's actually expressed it uh, voluntarily. <laughs> so I'm quite, uh, quite, quite thankful to know Ned all these years. <laughs> well, I was just thinking about when I walk through your your yard, I see the that the, the remnants of that that Absolutely. influence. Absolutely, I played you know? on that. Indeed, I play on that. In fact, all this work here is uh, it's newly molded in the two th year two th this century, let's say, yeah. but it's made to sort of have this old feeling of weathered, mm. and it's hand human, and you know, it, yeah. it's something about our past, you know, our human past of antiquity, and after all, Rome, my goodness, uh, that's uh, still sort of the dominant. Uh, ethos in the world today, I think. <laughs> well, the other um, um, aspect of art, which 
I'm not seeing so much in this very geometric, but in some of your earlier influence is, and, and I'm still, I'm sure, part of your, is this, is your love of curves. Yes, absolutely. Indeed, I do. <laughs> <laughs> which is, um, which I think is really wonderful to see in your work. So, yeah, sort, of, sort of an insistence of trying to work in the round and less in the square and the rectangular. But I'm also very, uh, very infatuated with crystallization of, you know, these geometric forms. So uh, I have a room for everything in my imagination. <laughs> right. Well, that's just one of the wonderful things about coming and visiting Bo Atkinson here in Montville. I hope you've had a, a chance to get a sense of Bo and his work. Uh, and as you can see on the screen, here's information on how you can get in touch with Bo and come and visit his uh drive-by art show no drive what is it roadside art show yeah just uh, just an art show is right art. roadside art show but really uh to contact me first is the way to actually see me because i might not be here if you expect to find me here <laughs> right unannounced you know? <laughs> yes all right all right until next time this is ned leitner for somewhere in waldo county